All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. I got another watch list for you, but momentum is definitely slowing, and we have a lot to talk about. Today was a crazy day. We were talking about the momentum slowing on Thursday. We were bringing up that big Friday expiration. We were talking about if the meme stocks go crazy or if it slows down, and then what happens with the dollar, and literally now coming into this week or after the weekend, we opened up today pretty ugly it was a solid two percent across every index the nasdaq was two and a half but now a couple of things have changed and leading into friday with jackson hole and the pce it could be a big one and now a lot of people are really saying all right bear market rally momentum i mean pretty much you are literally at the halfway mark of the bear market pretty much now that we've came back it's like about i want to say six to eight percent from the high so you are kind of in the middle now between bear market or wait a minute I thought it could have been a bull market so where we go this week it's gonna be crazy and we definitely have a lot to talk about so I got three plays for you I'm actually excited about all of them I don't have any other options to watch but if you notice a couple of the ones we brought up over the last few days they have been going crazy but I got a couple of energy plays I got a couple of hype plays for you too and then really what we are looking at for the rest of the week and then I got a bullet point list to really understand all of the craziness of today. So drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. YouTube.com slash The Stock Market. And, and I love you. Okay, that's it. No, no, just be nice. Even if I just love you. I, I hope you're ready, Chad. And just keep your head in the game. Okay, all right. Run it, baby. Make that volatility great. Joints on the last live in the hills, but I still get a spread. Started with a live, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, do you feel less a blessing? I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Farmer never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, downhill. Yeah. So right off the bat, I'm gonna start with this right here. You got no news in the United States today. So one thing to keep in mind is that we didn't hear anything about the Fed, we didn't get any specific data, but this was a big two and a half percent move and that is because there was a bunch of news overseas so if there was anything domestic i'm going to run through the list here but this was one domestic thing the rate hike odds have skyrocketed today so last week the odds of a 75 basis point hike was about 25 percent today after like early morning it shot back up to 50 percent and now it's above 50 and this is showing you some of the worry coming into jackson hall is that people are expecting powell to pretty much say anything along the lines of hey even if we watch inflation go down we are going to raise big that would be the hawkish Powell for Jackson Hole but then we talked about this a lot today in a weird way what analysts are scared of is if Powell accidentally comes off bullish or says anything bullish we're right in the middle of bear market bull market but that could actually launch the market. So that's the bearish bullish, but even in the midst of today without any news, those rate hike odds started to skyrocket and even the yield curve did uh, reinvert a little bit or lowered how much it was inverted today, which was kind of interesting. There was a lot of bond moves, we'll get to that, but there was that in the morning and then natural gas went crazy, both in the United States and in Europe, it hit a new record high, but the EU, the Europe fears of recession, energy crisis, there's gonna to be another maintenance on one of the gas prom things i mean people are freaking out as we're getting into winter and the fears of that are going through the roof right now so even those ewgs were back up on them now but that was a big move and then that led to the next thing the eu fell below parity today so you, it used to be the euro was stronger than the dollar and parity would mean one to one one euro gets you one dollar that's a big deal because that happened earlier in july but now it went lower than july and now it is the lowest since 2002 but it gets better we talked about this thursday the dollar that is starting to go up and now you're watching the market by the time the dollar did it, that move in two days the market has sold off six to eight percent but the dollar is now at the highest since 2002 it came down a little bit but if this stuff continues through the rest of the week you better watch natural gas you better watch the dollar they may start to bring some more market reactions but keep an eye up on europe because as we get into powell this week 
any of these types of headlines. I mean, people are focused that now that things are hitting these crazy levels and now going into the bonds, the 10-year went back above 3% again. That was a big deal. People were waiting. It's been a weird support and resistance, but going back above there, that's another sign that's not good again. The yields are kind of showing that, wait, maybe this inflation stuff isn't done and then maybe the Fed has a little bit more room to go, but there was that. And then in the morning, again, that's why I got the bullet points for you. There was more China stimulus and they stimulated their real estate market pretty much for the first time ever. It's not something that they usually do. Again, China's real estate has been crashing but amongst other things, but then they also did another series of rate cuts. So again, China not good. The stocks benefited a little bit. We talked about this today because like the thing about China stocks is that the only good thing that's happening is a rate cut, but the only reason there's a rate cut is because things are really bad and are probably going to get really worse. So there was that. People reacted that and again, Again, just keep in mind the euro's moving the dollar's moving more bad news rate cuts out of china i mean what this did to global currencies today it was bad and if we see that trend continue this might pair up very well with momentum slowing down in the market so there was that and then we got news from opec oil was down three and a half percent and then they came out of nowhere and said well there's a big supply imbalance and then they said they may actually need to cut output which is absolutely wild i mean consider the latest news that you've been getting out of OPEC was that there's like, yeah, we're going to raise, we're going to raise, but they said things aren't good and they said they may even need to cut back. So that one was interesting. And then finally, AMC and a lot of the heavily shorted stocks, even beyond AMC or any meme stocks, whatever you want to call it they actually all came down. That growth momentum has definitely slowed down. They all came down. It was a big day for AMC with the new ape dividend thing and the preferred shares going live. But overall, things still ended down. There was a couple of hype plays, but it was pretty easy to see momentum across the board has definitely, definitely slowed down. So what do you watch for the rest of the week? That PCE on Friday before Powell, I think it's important, especially if it comes in high. Again, everybody in the their mother is saying Powell is the primary event. So there's going to be a lot of eyes on it, but we talked about it here now. If we don't get any news in the meantime and you see where the market's at, these key levels are going to be important. What you got to watch for is a bunch of other data. There's a bunch of other economic data. You're going to get UK or EU minutes from their last Fed meeting. You're going to get a lot of global PMIs and all of that tomorrow. So keep that in mind, but really that PCE and then Powell and then a little bit, even on Friday, you're going to get consumer sentiment. That's what I'd be watching for. And if today was any indication, just watch that global news, watch the global data, and I'll pay attention to Europe and see how that plays out or spreads because that is definitely a big deal because like we're saying, the currency effects and the dominoes that are all connecting, it is very intricate. So when we start seeing this move, I mean, it could be telling us something. So watch out for Europe. Get ready for Powell. Get ready for a little bit more data. Couple of post earnings, but... Let us get into the play. So right off the bat, I got three plays. One of them is going to be a hype play. One will be a scanner play. And one of them I do not have. But like we've talked about, a lot of these other plays from last week, I, I missed on the UNG. But like I said, it'll happen this week. And that's what we're seeing. So I need to go for that play. I don't have any, but watch out for that. Those cold plays are already running. The NFEs, they came down a little bit, but they haven't hit our target. Again, even the PSX and oil just keep in mind some of the other plays that we've said to watch because this is stuff that we are following along with but as far as the first play this one's the hype one SMMT I have no idea what they do I need to do a lot more research none of this is a recommendation but there was interesting things that happened today that really, really caught my interest. So how it started, you know, what, what even happened with this stock this morning, there was a giant insider buy from the CEO of literally 97 million shares at 97 cents. So that means $97 million, but there was like another offering involved. And that's what I don't know. And that's what would be the real killer to this play. But that's what got it hyped. I started looking into it and I found out that two of the board members, the CEO and president, they own 
own over 160% of the outstanding stock. So that's why I'm saying this is where it's interesting. I haven't fell in love with it. I bought 500 shares at like $1.50 or something. Yeah, $1.52. Nothing too crazy, about like six, $700. So one of the smaller share plays, but I like it. There was some movement, even just with how things are playing. This one had a little bit of activity. So I like it. I'm not fully sold on it, but assuming the offering isn't going to be a negative effect. And then if they really, I mean, depending on how this share structure really is, it could be decent, but for the most part, it's going to be a hype play. We'll see. You saw the MGAM TGL. Again, you've seen them come down, but remember they had movement before that. So we'll see how it plays out in the market. I'm not in love with it. Again, don't make these one, don't make any of these difficult and just control the risk. And even myself, I'm playing with like 700 bucks. We've gone a lot bigger, even if it's shares. Imagine some of these day trade flips. Like I did at least 10, 15 grand today of random trades, but these are different quality companies, you know? So on these dollar fifty ones, I, you only need 700. You don't need that much money. And that's even how I'm playing, regardless of any other balances that we're using. So keep that in mind. That is play number one. And now play number two, this one's going to be post earnings. I really like it. Actually, I think it could be a good one. And, and I want you to understand this concept of immunity, especially if the market plays a little bit weird, but they got a three for one stock split. They had good earnings after hours. And like I'm saying, if they're up and they got good news driving it, if we see volatility and the market does slow down, there may be little pockets that are able to do good. I mean, you've seen it before. It's kind of like Survivor. They get the little tiki, good earnings, stock split. They, they could be immune to any volatility as we move forward. So Palo Alto, I like it. I have no plays on it, but I'm definitely going to check this one in the morning, but also maybe like an hour after. Again, you guys know I like to do a lot of those morning plays, but this earnings season, the ones like 30 minutes after, it's been really, really hit or miss. So I may want to wait a little bit, or maybe I'm just hesitant because of that, but we will see. But that is play number two. And then finally, baby, I like this one. It came up on the scanner, but just don't go crazy with it. H Y G. So like I said, it showed up on the scanner, but it just flows really, really in line with all of this dollar bond, global currencies, fed, everything like that. So I think it's decent exposure coming into Jackson Hole. If we get volatility, you're already watching the lead up, but it's not like I think this is the next TLT more or less. I think it's great exposure. I, I wouldn't mind a hundred bucks. I mean, can it turn into a TLT? I mean, it really just depends what happened in the scale of it, but as of now, I'm not thinking that it's there and the premiums are high in the short term. So this is what I brought up with the PSX. Like you look at the like 20 day chart, you can see how they've came off the bottom. But then if you pull it out, you'll notice on a 100 day chart, it is definitely declined. So these are the ones that get a little difficult because it's like, OK, you know, it's cheaper over time. It's probably for a reason. But then there's a little bit of premium. If it reverses on the next day, you could be down 20, 30 percent pretty quick on there. So be careful with that. I got a little bit bit of time and again this one showed up on the scanner this exact play uh, it was a September 72 and a half call I bought three of them for about 35 cents so literally I only spent a hundred dollars on it but like I'm saying if things develop and even post Jackson Hole if this really was going to be a TLT play though I really feel post Jackson Hole we will know and we'll still probably be able to get the premiums for not too too expensive but don't go too crazy however I just wanted to have a little bit of Jackson Hole exposure and I like this play for this week Week at the very least so hopefully you like that but those were the main plays as far as anything else I don't know what I did besides the day trades in the SMTT I didn't even say I bought 500 shares of the SMT I said at $1.50 uh, I did a couple of other day trades and then I bought a Dick Sporting Goods for next week at $81 put uh, at 55 81 I thought I got 82 80, it says I got the 81 there, but for 55 cents, I thought it was 82. But this one's 20% off the money. They're pricing in 10%. So 20% would probably be around a two, two and a half percent or standard deviation move. 60 bucks if we could get lucky. Again, Dick's Sporting Goods, they had a really good earnings the last time and they were able to pop up. I think they did so bad that they ended up doing good. That's why this time around, I don't know if it's going to hit the same. So we'll see. It was already a wicked bounce off of that, but I think that could be a good post earnings. And then I made two day trades. I I got Signify, SGFY. They had a buyout offer for $30 from UNH. I don't think they've accepted anything. I bought in at $21.17 or $29.17. Ended up selling out at $28. I lost $100, bucks, $117 on 100 shares. I flipped UVXY from $10.04 to $10.11 on 200 shares. Made like 12 bucks. That one was wild. That was another one of these stock day trades throughout the day. Uh, and then I'm actually holding eight shares of Tesla short. I was going to flip that at $8.66. But these are just the small little day trades that we've been doing. They've been 
they've been quite nice, at least giving us some exposure with a lot more flexibility than any premium. So watch out for that. Still an energy play, still eyeing at any more of those UNG and natural gas, not taking my eye off of it, getting ready for Powell a little bit, and then seeing there's any more global or currency stuff. If it could give us a good leading indicator, we might get anything. Otherwise, it's in the hands of data, and it's in the hands of Powell, and finger to the sky, baby. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, you gotta get, you gotta keep going and stick to the mission no matter what, bro. It don't matter if they sold you off, if they doubted you, even if they accuse you, even if they forgot you, baby. You're here and you stayed like this for a reason. The mindset, how come you couldn't be shaking, bro? Yeah, think about that. A lot of people have. I'm telling you, you scatter the seas. Not all of them even land. Some grow up and quickly die. I could get into it. I'm just telling you, it's here, baby. So be, blah, 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 blah. Not, don't get too crazy with this here, but it's here. Something's here. I don't know what's, but I'm just saying, man, it's game time. You need to focus. You're already there, man. Let's get ready to the end of the year, Chad. And this week, we may say a lot. And I, honestly, I mean, just be prepared to be surprised. You know what I'm saying? So a more fati, enjoy it as it comes. And I hope you're ready, Chad, but I love you. Enjoy your day. Get some good sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. And come with that. Let's go, baby. God bless, Chad. Make it great again. Honestly, in this shirt, smell. Like, you smell bad, but, like, maybe volatile. I don't know what that means. Maybe that's a feel. I don't know. Okay, I love you. <laughs>